I'll even put it in a highlighter box. Boop, boop, to whatever extent I can. I don't think I can draw sideways. Eh, eh, I don't like that. All right, it's in a box, that's good. <laughs> we know it's important. <laughs> okay. So that's how we do our general antiderivatives. Okay, um, so any general questions on the general antiderivatives? Make a guess, correct your guess. Oh, and add the constant on the end. <laughs> I just saw my little note, don't forget the constant, so. Okay, sounds like we're all right. Um, so let's move on to our next page here. And we are gonna look at something called differential equations. And there's actually a whole class on these. Um, it's Math 5 if you need to take that class. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of Math 5 today. And um, so differential equations, are equations, naturally, that's right in the name, that involve the derivatives of a function. And that could be the first derivative, second, third, higher derivatives even. Um, we'll keep the derivatives fairly low, just first and second derivatives for today. Um, so these differential equations involve the derivatives of a function. Some also come with extra conditions to help find a specific solution called the particular solution. Okay, so we'll, we'll jump into our first example here. All right, so it says to find f of x, given that f prime of x equals 2x cubed minus 5x plus 7, and f of one equals zero. So notice how we're back to that um, kind of uh, original notation. We're not using big F of x here because it does say for differential equations that they involve the derivatives of a function. So we get to call this f prime of x again. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is find the general antiderivative of f prime. That'll help us start getting regular f of x. So we'll do antiderivative here. Okay, so who's got our antiderivative? What's our guess at least for little f of x, the original function? out for a minute. I know it is hard to put in the chat box. So yeah, no worries. Oh, there we go. There's our first input here. All right. Hey, that is looking good. All right. So Felipe's function here is one half x to the fourth power minus five halves x squared plus seven x plus c. And just to make sure, we'll check that real quick, although it does look good to me, by the way. Um, so just checking off to the side. Okay, f prime of x, that would be one half times four x to the third power with our power rule. And then 
minus 5 halves times 2x to the first from our power rule, and then plus 7, and the derivative of c is uh, 0, so that's good. And yeah, looks like everything is going to turn out okay there. Things that are needing to cancel out are doing so. Yeah, so there's our our actual f prime of x back. So this is this is good. That is the correct antiderivative. Good job, Felipe. And you got the plus c on the end there too. So nice. All right. So that is our antiderivative. And yeah, to find the solution with f of 1 equals 0, set f of x equal to 0. Yeah, you know where we're heading with this. Yes, you do. Very good. Um, so yeah, what we found here, this is the um, general antiderivative, because we have that general generic plus c constant on the end. So this yeah, is called the general solution. Okay. with the plus C on there. And then, yeah, that's where that extra condition comes in. It's going to help us find our specific or particular solution to this problem. Um, so the solutions that have this derivative, the general solutions, could be a whole lot of different curves, all right? It's any function that looks like this plus any constant on the end, so it's that fourth degree polynomial thing, and then we could add or subtract any value on the end. So we want to narrow that down from not having an infinite number of different general solutions to just having the one particular solution that goes through this point right here, f of 1 equals 0. So yeah, we're going to plug that in, like Felipe was saying there. So to find the particular solution, oops, particular solution, use f of 1 equals 0 to find the c that we specifically want. Okay, so f of 1, plugging 1 into this function here, would be 1 half 1 to the fourth minus 5 halves 1 squared plus 7 times 1 plus c. Okay, and so there we would get 1 half minus 5 halves, and that would be negative 4 halves, that's negative 2, okay, plus 7 would be 5 plus c. Okay. And so that is going to equal 0. Okay, so set f of 1 equal to 0. 5 plus c equals 0. That's going to give us c equals negative 5. So that is the specific value of c that we want to fully solve this differential equation. Okay, it's got the right derivative and when c equals negative 5 it will also meet that extra condition. Okay, so our answer here is that f of x is going to equal 1 half x to the fourth minus 5 halves x squared plus 7x minus 5. So that's putting in our c value on the end right there. 